giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is first in my life, it gives me great honor and privilege to stand before you once again in the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be glad in this day for life, for breath, and for freedom to worship. Blessed are you who have come in the name of the Lord. We come to offer our gifts of praise and gratitude to the King of all creation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now. Just thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we come to you right now uh, just thanking you that we can lift up your name without fear of being persecuted. Lord, right now we just ask that you just continue to be with us throughout the further part of this day as we continue to move through this pandemic. And we ask that you just continue to love on us as we love on you. For all these things we ask and count it done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The good news is in Christ uh, that when we face ourselves in God with awareness of our needs, we are giving grace to grow and courage to continue in the journey. Isaiah said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. This morning, once again, I am coming to you by way of social media uh, because we're still under the COVID uh, precautions. And so I am here once again by myself. Well, I can't really say I'm by myself because the Lord is with me wherever I go. But uh, uh, while you are at home, we ask that you just continue to lift one another up in prayer and also remember to uh, stay safe. Um, first of all, we would like to uh, welcome everyone to Beulah Presbyterian Church of North Wilkesboro, where we walk by faith and not by sight, knowing with God all things are possible. So once again, we are coming to you by way of social media. So our, our doors are not open right now, but when things get better and we can get back to worshiping the Lord like we uh, usually do, uh, we invite you to come and stop by and worship with us. Come on in, take a seat, take a load off and help us lift up the Lord's name and praise because our doors are always open and they swing on the hinges of faith, hope, and love. Now, uh, last week, um, because of some issues I had with uh, Sony Music Entertainment and YouTube, I will not be playing a selection today because uh, I'm not going to ever do anything else that's going to hinder God's word from getting out. So uh, we're going to skip those kind of things uh, because, of course, uh, God's word is the most important thing. Now, to everybody out there who has a birthday this week, we would like to wish you a very happy birthday. Uh, even though we are not able to come together and sing those uh, happy birthday songs to one another, I, I just want you to uh, know that I wish you a very happy birthday from the bottom of my heart. And even though you're not here, I'm hugging you right now. Uh, but once again, um, we're going to move right along with the service. Um, Today, our message will be coming from the gospel according to John, chapter 14, and we're going to look at one short verse. Uh, that'll be verse number one. Again, we're looking at the gospel of John, chapter 14, verse one. So while you're taking time to uh, look that up, um, I would also like to uh, uh, mention that uh, we need to once again, keep our brothers and sisters lifted up in prayer. Uh, so uh, I heard that uh, our brother, uh, Reverend Charles Ferguson, is under the weather. So we want to uh, uh, remember him uh, as we pray for one another. And we also want to remember the Martin and uh, Becknell family uh, who have lost a loved one during this time period. So uh, in your prayers, always remember to lift up these uh families as well. Amen. But once again, our message is coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1. And the word of the Lord is read as thus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to read that again. Let not your heart be troubled. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. Church, let's be honest. Trying to live in today's climate is a lot to bear. First of all, we are wading through troubled waters of this pandemic. Political and racial tensions are at an all-time high. The financial structure of this country seems to be on the verge of collapse. Putting food on the table and trying to make ends meet has become more and more difficult. Churches, families, and friends, uh, just for the sake of everyone's health, are restricted from gathering in the ways that we are used to. And that's not to mention the fact that we all have our own individual struggle, struggles. Uh, uh, and, and see, when you look at it, it can be a bit overwhelming. In fact, it's enough to make you want to scream. It makes you want to say, oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not heal? And this brings me to the title of my message. Keep your head to the sky. May we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as I sat down, you stand up. Hide me behind the cross. For it is not about me and all about you. Lord, right now we are struggling through some trying times right now. Because we're at a standstill. We're at a crossroad. There are a lot of things going on that are keeping us from doing the things that we like to. Doing the things the way we want to do. But we have to remember to be still and know that you are God. Lord, I ask right now that this word goes out. That it be like a seed planted in the hearts of your people. That you water it and give it the increase. And then in due time, Father, as we meditate on this word, let everybody know that we don't have a reason to be burdened down with anything. We should always give our cares and cast them unto you. For we know that you love us and you keep us. For all these things we ask and count it done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep your head to the sky. You see, here in chapter 14, this is known as part of Jesus' farewell discourse. As a matter of fact, those are chapters 14 through 17. But, but this is a part of Jesus' farewell discourse in which he gave words to his disciples that was intended to encourage them as they would unknowingly have to watch Jesus die. You see, see his, his words were also intended uh, to help Prepare them for the tough road which lied ahead. A, a life of ministry and all of the dangers and pitfalls that goes along with it. But according to uh, our text, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You see, the first thing that we should notice about the text is that Jesus said, let not. Meaning that he was, uh, he was asking his disciples as well as us not to do something. And here that something was and always is to not allow our hearts to grieve us. You see, when one is troubled, they are beset by problems or some type of conflict. And if one's heart is troubled, then they are in a state or condition of mental distress or anxiety. And anxiety is feelings of worry, nervousness, or unease, uh, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. So, in other words, it is one's inability to cope, deal, or exist in or with certain situations that are beyond their control. So, this is an internal issue of control. You see, the, the, the Greek word for the phrase, be troubled, uh, is the word terezo which means to stir or agitate something, to stir it up. And that's exactly what we do when we worry or get anxious over people and things that are beyond our control. So, in other words, we stir it up in our hearts and we get anxious, full of worry, doubt, and fear. 
We become troubled and our hearts grieve us. You see, now, we already know that we are not meant nor capable of controlling everything around us. As a matter of fact, the only thing that we control is ourselves and how we act in certain situations. You see, we can't even uh, control the external factors of our lives and how they affect us. So the best thing that any of us can do is to keep our heads to the sky and give those problems over to the Lord. Paul said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. But here in the text, Jesus was doing something. He was preparing his disciples for what they were going to see, what they were going to witness. This experience, this situation was going to be something well uh, beyond their comprehension and their control. There was nothing they could do about it. You see, the disciples who walked and talked with Jesus every day still did not understand everything that he was talking about. They could not foresee the events that was coming his way, nor the situations that they were going to have to face. All of these things were well beyond their control. And today, even though that we have the Bible, which clearly tells us that the Lord our God is the one who goes with us and that he will never forsake nor leave us, uh, that still does not mean that we are oblivious to troubles. The fact that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in us uh, still does not mean that uh, we know with all certainty uh, what obstacles and hurdles lie before us. Because it was Jesus who said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you, have, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Then Paul said to the Corinthian church, no temptation has overtaken us except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will now allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. You see, to control something is a temptation. To worry about it is a temptation. To stress over something that is beyond your control as if it's going to change the situation is a temptation. But in God, we find and we have peace. A peace which surpasses all understanding that guards our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And you see, this is why we take everything, no matter how big or small it may be, this is why we should take everything to the Lord in prayer. We say, we, we, we pray, God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things that we can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is. Not as we would have it, trusting that Jesus will make all things right if we surrender to his will. That we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. You see, this is what's known as the serenity prayer. Serenity meaning quality or state of being calm, peaceful, or untroubled. You see, the best thing that we can do is to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. Because if we don't, these troubles, these grievances, these issues that we think we have will drive us insane. That's why Jesus said, come unto me, all who are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, labor is weariness and a heavy laden is our burdens. See, once again, we are not meant to carry these things. So we need to bring them to God and leave it there. You see, over in the ninth division of Psalms, David said, Those who know your name, Lord, will put their trust in you, for you have not forsaken those who seek you. Then if you go over uh, 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 another 20 uh, divisions or so, over in the 34th division of, of Psalms, David said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. This is because David knew how to keep his head to the sky and give his problems to God in prayer. But in our text, Jesus goes on to say, you believe in God, believe also in me. You see, as we look at this portion of the text, the word believe appears twice. But the Greek word for believe is the word which means to have faith in, upon, or with respect to a person, especially in regards to one's spiritual well-being to Christ. You see, believing in God for most people is the easiest part of faith. The Old Testament saints, they believed in God. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes they believed in God. The Romans, uh, 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 they believed that there was one God over all the other gods. They just didn't know who he was. The Judaizers believed in God and his written law. The Gnostics, they believed in God. They just had this urge to want to intertwine him with astrology, science, and magic. Even today, Many other cultures and religions, just like the Jews and the Muslims, they also believe in God. And to a degree, even some atheists at some point in time believed in God. It's just something happened to them and they lost their faith. You see, all of creation declares that there is a God. In Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4, Moses said, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. This is the history of the heavens and earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. So Moses was referring to the history of creation and everything that God had created, the heavens and the earth and everything that dwells in it and on it. In the eighth division of Psalms, David said, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, they pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So here David was praising God for all of his creations and with a humility, the, the kind of humility that we should have in approaching God in prayer. Then over in Isaiah chapter 40, uh, uh, God said, to whom then will you liken me or whom shall I be equal? 
Then Isaiah told the people, lift up your eyes on high and see who uh, has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all name by name by the greatness of his might and strength of his power. Not one is missing. So Isaiah was describing the majesty and power of God. So the Bible clearly explains to us that all of creation declares that there is a God. But guess what? It also declares that there is a Jesus. John said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. So John was referring to Jesus as the word. So, so uh, in other words, he was saying in the beginning was Jesus and Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. Paul told the Jews of Rome that since uh, the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Paul was saying that since the beginning of the world, God's eternal power can be seen uh, uh, in all of his creation. And uh, it's easy for people to understand this because they see it. Therefore, they do not have an excuse for the evil things that they do. They don't have an excuse to not accept God. And to the church of Colossus, Paul said, for by him, referring to Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Meaning that through Jesus, all things were created. But furthermore, the Bible indicates that God and Jesus are one and the same. And so God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, are three parts in one. According to the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And then if you come on further down in uh, chapter 14, uh, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. Then Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. So how can you say, show us the father? Then once again, Paul told the church of Coloss, for in him, talking about Jesus Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. But here in our text, once again, Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. Because in Jesus we have peace. Further down in chapter uh, 14 of John, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So once again, Jesus tells us not to let our hearts be troubled. And don't be afraid. Why? Because he gives us peace. His peace is different from the peace that you get from the world. You see, there are two different forms of peace. And each one comes from a different place. Peace is a stress-free state of security and calmness. It's being mentally at peace with enough knowledge and understanding to keep oneself strong in the face of discord and stress. 
It comes when there is no fighting or war, everything coexisting in perfect harmony and freedom. And see, this is what people call an inner peace. But spiritual peace is completely different. Spiritual peace is the Hebrew word shalom, which is total completeness, harmony, success, soundness, fulfillment, whole, uh, wholeness, strength, uh, security, uh, welfare, and well-being spiritually. This means that well, uh, uh, one has made amends, is whole or complete in God. See, you can have inner peace and spiritually still be tore up. But if you got spiritual peace, then everything else is okay. The troubles of this world don't even bother you. You know how to let go and let God. You know how to fall down on your knees and give it to the Lord in prayer. Peter said, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And part of humbling ourselves to God is admitting that we need him and knowing that in due time he will remove us from the troubles uh, that we are facing, the troubles of this world, and he will exalt us to new levels of understanding and a new uh, a level of life. Knowing that through him, everything will be all right. Jesus said that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So if you have faith in God, then also have faith in Jesus and keep your head to the sky. But all of these so-called troubles that we face are nothing. Believe it or not, they're actually meant for our good. James said, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So as long as you know that God is in the one in control, then everything will be all right. So in closing, I came here today to let you know that as long as you keep your head to the sky with God, you can win. In the midst of sorrow, as long as you keep your head to the sky, God will hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and heal this land. Because his eyes will be open and his ears attentive to our prayers. If you hear the voice of reason telling you that you can't make it, just know that as long as you keep your head to the sky, with God, nothing is impossible. If things around you begin to crumble and fall, as long as you keep your head to the sky, always remember that we shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds us with his hand. If the storms of life have got you down, as long as you keep your head to the sky, he will speak, peace be still, and know that I am God. In your times of need, as long as you keep your head to the sky, God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you are all out of sorts and you don't know what to do, as long as you keep your head to the sky, just realize that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Church, people of God, let not your hearts be troubled. Give it to God. If you have faith in God, have faith also in Jesus. And know that you can win as long as you keep your head to the sky. To God be the glory. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by power 
of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just thanking you for this word that has gone out. Lord, help us to realize that no matter what it is we face, no matter how difficult life may be and all of the troubles that are bearing down on us, all of our emotional and uh, uh, stressful needs, our financial issues, Father, they mean nothing as long as we keep our heads to the sky. With you, we will always win. Lord, help us to be able to take our issues, to know that we can take them to you and that you will respond. It may not be when we want them, but it's always right on time. Lord, help us, grow us in faith and in understanding and in our knowledge and wisdom of you. That with you, all things are possible. For all these things we ask and count it done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now for those of you out there who may be watching this, I just want you to know that life has been rough lately. And some of you may have recognized the title of this message. Keep your head to the sky. It reminded me of the song Optimistic by the group The Sounds of Blackness. And it's always been one of those songs that I loved so much. Every time things wasn't going right. Every time somebody told me that I wasn't good enough. I knew that as long as I kept my head to the sky that with God I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me so it doesn't matter what you're going through it doesn't matter what people say because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world so today I would just like to say so long from Beulah Presbyterian Church and always remember don't let the naysayers take control of your life. Just remember, as long as you keep your head to the sky, you can win. Amen.